Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today I'm we're going to be taking a look at the RX 480 Gaming X from MSI. And this is going to be a really, really quick video because there's really not much to talk about on this card because MSI made it easy for me. I don't know how they managed to do that because it's not really that much different from all the other PCBs, but hey, uh, they did somehow manage to make this take less time. So first things first, let's go over the main voltages. So core voltage is provided by this VRM right here. So that feeds the bulk of your GPU core's power. It's controlled by the IR3567B. Over on this side of the card, we find the auxiliary and the memory VRM. I have no idea which is which again, because I need the actual card in hand to be able to measure which VRM does what. However, I can tell you this much, they're both identical in terms of power delivery capability. They're going to be slightly different in how like clean the power coming out of them is because one of them has significantly larger capacitors. At least I assume that they all belong to this one, but I'm not sure. And oops. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, one of them is going to feed your GDDR5, one of them is going to feed the memory controller on the GPU. They're both the same power, so it doesn't really matter. I can't cover how to volt mod either of them any either because uh, can you read this? Because I sure can't read that. So, yeah, I can't tell you how to volt mod either of them. However, if you do have the Gaming X, you can just look at this IC, and if you can figure out what this brown mess right here is, um, that'll tell, you know, punch that into Google, and if you're lucky, you'll get a data sheet detailing that chip in all the detail you need. And if you need any help with that, you can always send me a message on YouTube, and I'll be happy to help you. Do remember that if you destroy the card, it's not my fault, okay? <laughs> so, that's that. Uh, last VRM on the card, the 0.95 volt. Unfortunately, I can't read this either, so I have no idea what this one is. So, however, I suspect it's going to be the same deal as all the other cards, which means an 8 amp uh, fully integrated VRM in a chip. Because this integrate this chip right here integrates all the active components of a VRM, and then you only are left with the passive components like the uh, inductor and the capacitor. So now that's that's all the VRMs on this card. Let's actually talk about them in some more detail. So the V core on this card is entirely fed by the eight pin. So you have the eight pin that goes through this choke right here. So that's there to suppress current spikes coming off of the V-Core VRM. And then that feeds into this massive power plane right here. And that power plane then feeds all of these uh, phases. So, yeah, so the V-Core is entirely on your 8-pin. So that's nice. You don't have to worry about burning out your PCIe socket. Though I, I still don't believe that that's actually doable. So... You know, make of that what you will, but if you're worried about your PCIe socket, then don't. With this card, you're safe. Um, the VCore VRM is a six phase. We have six chokes, and we have six high side, low side MOSFET uh, integrated IC things. Do these have an official name? Um, Well, they call them a dual n-channel MOSFET, which works, but that's not nearly short enough as, as I like it to be. So yeah, it's two MOSFETs on one chip. So, yeah. And you also have your six driver ICs behind that. So this is a true six-phase controlled by the six-phase 3567B. So yeah, this VRM in terms of actual power quality should be comparable to basically any other RX 480 except the Nitro and the Strix because the Nitro and the Strix use power IR stages and those have a few extra features for power quality management that, disc well this is not really discrete, but regular old MOSFETs without any supporting circuitry can't do. So, regular old support, uh, regular old MOSFETs, however, you know, let's talk about the current rating for these guys. So. One of these is a Ubic 3816. It has a high side FET rated for 32 amps at 100 degrees. So 100 degrees centigrade. That's a pretty good rating. Uh, a whole 8 amps below the reference card though. So 
I am not impressed by this VRM in the slightest. The low side is 74 amps at 100 degrees. So, 74, there. So that's a seven, 74 amps at 100 degrees. So in this scenario, your high side is probably the one that's gonna be in trouble uh, if you overload the VRM. However, I wish you good luck with that because this can do 192 amps continuous at 100 degrees and that's continuous current rating. If you go by the pulse ratings, which I do have a calculator that can actually, well, I do have a piece of software that can actually calculate how that rating looks, you're gonna be looking at something around 300 amps and you're not gonna pull that off. Like, no way, even with this VRM. So, I mean, yeah, with an RX 480, no amount of voltage will get it to pull 300 amps. No way, you're not gonna fry this VRM. So, and that's with the VRM doing 100 degrees. If you keep the VRM reasonably cool, then the current rating goes even higher. So it is weaker than the reference card because the reference card can do more than that. And then the GTR and the Strix can, can do even more than that in the pulse ratings. But, you know, I'm, I'm still sort of fine tuning the calculator. So I'm not gonna give you actual like exact numbers. Either way, this VRM is plenty capable for any kind of gaming, overclocking, and you know, you could even throw it on LN2 um, if you wanted to. The only reason why I wouldn't throw this card on LN2, well, why I wouldn't go for this card is there's more ridiculous, like you can get much more powerful PCBs, and you can also get BIOS switches on some of those. This doesn't have a BIOS switch. I'm not a fan of that decision. So, yeah, uh, but still, plenty capable, like it's a, it's a capable card for any kind of usage, you know, any kind of normal usage, and even LN2 it would handle just fine. It's just, there's better cards out there for, in terms of just raw PCB quality. So, that leaves us to the two remaining VRMs, the auxiliary and the memory, and these both use the exact same MOSFET as the V-Core. These are the Ubix again, so we have 32 amps on the high side and 74 on the low, which is pretty much in line with all the other RX 480s you can get. So, this card is like, if I'm, yeah, in my opinion, it's completely average. There's nothing to worry about. It's not gonna burn your house down. It's not gonna burn your house down even if you fed it 1.35 volts. It's not gonna burn your house down if you uh, try to run Furmark on it. It's not gonna burn your house down basically under any scenario, though I probably wouldn't try to do 1.35 volts, no power limit, and Furmark. Just because that one seems like you wouldn't be actually able to handle the VRM temperature. Because that's that's the bigger issue, is like when you start pushing a lot of power through a lot of VRMs, like at normal power consumption levels, they're you know, they're running at 70 degrees. At twice the current demand or three times the current demand, you're gonna be putting out four times to nine times the heat. Um, and then you start having serious issues which is why I go by 100 degree ratings, because 100 degrees is usually where you start hitting the thermal protection for most VRMs. Above 100 degrees, it'll usually the, the VRM protection will kick in and it'll downclock the GPU. So that's why I go by 100 degrees rating, because that's where the VRM still doesn't go into safety. So yeah, but overall, nice card. Uh, if you have it, I wouldn't be worried about it. I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't buy it because it doesn't have a BIOS switch. And really, before I care about the V, like for me personally, it's like before I would, you know, care about the VRM a lot, it's like BIOS switch and good VRM is pro always going to be king for me. So this has a fine VRM. I'm not going to say it's good because it's weaker than the reference card and it's weaker than two other RX4, three other R, no, well. Depends on how you take it. Two other, three other RX 480s. The Nitro is arguable. Um, so, yeah. Um, this doesn't have a BIOS switch and that pretty much, you know, that, that's the end of my interest in it. But if you don't care about BIOS switches, then this PCB is perfectly capable for whatever needs you may have. 
However, I would not be interested in paying a pro premium for this PCB because it's not premium. Just isn't, you know? So, like, I don't, I, I haven't checked the price for this card, but if it's going for a significantly higher price than all the other cards, then I wouldn't get it because the PCB isn't worth it. Unless, of course, you want the, want the cooling performance of this card, and I'm not sure how that compares either because, again, I haven't checked. And I don't even have the card to, like, I'd need the card in hand to actually do cooling performance testing, so I have no idea how the cooling performs on this thing. So yeah, that's that for this video. Um, I hope you liked it, even if you didn't like what you learned about this PCB. And if you did, then there's a like button, there's a subscribe button, there's a share button. You can go use all of them. That would really help me out there and below down in the description there is also a support link to support this whole youtube channel and blog and and all the actually hardcore overclocking stuff that support link will take you to a page where there's my there's a link to the patreon and there's a link to shirts uh ahoc shirts for both the us and the eu so if you want to have a shirt to show just how hardcore you are at overclocking you can go get one of those and i get you know I make money off of every shirt sold. So that can then go into buying computer hardware to blow up in real life instead of just talk about on a photo. Thank you for watching and see you next time.